Dino 1.45 was just released, and with this version we are bringing more powerful capabilities for developers. The standout feature of the release is the introduction of workspaces, which provide a robust solution for managing monorepos. This addition simplifies dependency management, configuration sharing, and module organization across large code bases. Workspaces are a powerful and handy tool in many scenarios. First, they allow you to share common configuration or dependencies among multiple directories specifying imports in the root of the workspace. You can also have different configuration details for different directories, which comes in handy if you are migrating an existing Node.js project and want to keep some settings intact. In addition, publishing workspace members to JSR is as easy as running Dino Publish. Finally, you can have an NPM package inside the Dino workspace, which helps with incrementally migrating a Node codebase to Dino. We'll look at a proper workspace example in just a second, but first, let's quickly review three other interesting additions. Note that in the upcoming Dino 2, the install subcommand will behave more like npm install to support common workflows. Currently in Dino, the install command adds binary packages globally. In the upcoming version 2, we are switching to local by default, adding a new dependency to the project and then caching it. On top of that, running dino install without an argument will cache local dependencies listed in package.json or an import map as well as set up a local node modules directory if applicable. Next, a new frozen flag has been added that controls the behavior of the lock file. You can use it to tell dino to error out anytime the lock file gets out of date. This is especially useful in the context of CI pipelines, where you should ensure that all the pushed code is up to date and there are no new or surprising changes to your dependencies. Finally, Dino 2 is right around the corner and we mean it this time. If you want to make your life easier and the migration from Dino 1 to 2 as smooth as possible, you should be using the Dino Future 1 flag. This applies especially in a CI environment. If you run into any issues from this, please create an issue in GitHub. Back to workspaces, let's go over an example of how to use them in Dino. Workspaces are just collections of members defined as subdirectories in the dino.json configuration file. In this example, we are configuring two members which are expected to have a dino.json or package.json file in their directories. Note that Dino workspaces uses the keyword workspace rather than npm's workspaces since it represents a singular workspace with multiple members. Then, we can go ahead and define a basic two-package monorepo. Both packages have a configuration and a mod.ts in their directories with some basic ts demo functions. Then, in main.ts, we simply import the functions from the subdirectories. Note that because we use name and version options in the member's config files, it is possible to refer to them using bare specifiers across the whole workspace. So, thanks to these two options, it's not necessary to use long and relative file paths in import statements. Also, the chalk package is a shared dependency between the two packages. Workspace members inherit imports of the workspace root, allowing to easily manage a single version of a dependency across the codebase. NPM workspaces also work seamlessly in Dino. That means you can have a hybrid Dino and NPM workspace. This is helpful for incremental migration from a node codebase to Dino. For examples, please refer to our documentation. We are always continuing to improve the Dino platform, and we are even closer to the Dino 2.0 release. If you found this interesting, you can check out some of the other features Dino is offering, and until next time, thank you for watching.